Money is a tool. Nothing more, nothing less. Say that out loud. Nothing more, nothing less. Listen, if you're a jerk, money makes you more of a jerk. If you are Mother Teresa, money makes you more of Mother Teresa. Money is a tool, a powerful tool, but a tool nonetheless. In the hands of a kind-hearted person, money can be used to do a lot of good. In the hands of a cruel person, money can be used to perpetuate a lot of evil. Money has no will of its own. It is the wielder that determines how this tool would be used. Your attitude towards money determines how you use it and if it will multiply, remain the same or deplete. Welcome to Street Savvy Finances, a channel dedicated to analyzing the financial strategies of millionaires, billionaires, and financial experts to help you achieve your financial goals faster. Whatever your financial goals are, we are prepared to help you achieve them through our realistic, simple, and effective approach to finances. Ensure you watch to the end and please subscribe, turn on notifications, and like this video. In this video, we examine Tom Ferry's advice on managing money like the rich. Tom Ferry is the number one real estate educator who has coached thousands of real estate agents to live and work by design. We will be examining how poor people manage their money and how rich people manage theirs to help you determine the money mistakes you are making and correct them. As is the famous maxim, there are three types of people based on their money habits. The first group consists of 5% of the world's total population. These are people that have built generational wealth. When they die, they will hand over properties, conglomerates, and other assets to their children who will, in turn, hand them over to their own children. These world population members have hundreds of thousands, millions, and even billions of dollars. Next comes the 15%. These members of the world's population have nice cars, houses, and they go on vacations. They also have a few investments and would have no problem staying afloat even after retirement. The members of the third group are people who will not be able to stay afloat after retirement. They either have to work or depend on the government or relatives to make ends meet. The difference between these three sets of people is the choices they make when money comes their way. Listen to Tom explain the different categories of people in the world. There's been a lot of research on this. And you've probably seen something like this before, especially if you've ever met with a financial planner or, you know, you watch CNN Financial. They all say the same thing. Write down 5, 15, and 80. 5, 15, and 80. 5%, 15%, and 80%. 5%, 15%, and 80%. And as all the studies show, it says 5% of the planet are basically generational wealth. They have created generational wealth. It's not the top 1%, guys. Somebody who is worth $5 million, who has paid off their home, and when they pass on, they transfer all that wealth over, that's generational wealth. You with me on this? Some of them are worth millions, some of them it's tens, some of them are hundreds, some of them are now billions. But that's the 5%. The 15%, write this in your notes, you ready? They are the middle class. They got a house, they got a little savings, they go on a few vacations, and they're comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that 15%. But where do you think the 80% sits? Darcy, the 80%? 80%, 80%, look around the room. Potentially 80% of this room I don't think so, but potentially with the numbers, 80% of this room, when they are older, either A, have to work to make money, or B, are dependent upon the government or their family to subsidize their lifestyle. As a real estate educator, Tom Ferry distinguishes the money habits of the three categories of people using real estate professionals. He starts with real estate professionals that are members of the third category. These people make up 80% of the total real estate professionals. Tom says one peculiar habit of members of this group is that they have only one account. They only have personal accounts where they receive all funds. As a result, they lose out on the tax advantages that come with running an incorporated business. They also end up spending a large part of what they earn on personal purchases. Since their earnings come directly into their personal accounts, they never set apart business expenses or even taxes. At the end of the day, what happens? They run into debt and stay poor. This is the mentality of 80% of the world. Until you change this mindset, you will not move into the 15% bracket. Here's Tom explaining this. This is what 80% of real estate professionals do. 80% of real estate professionals they get a commission check, and that check goes into their personal account. Their personal account. 80%. They get a check, and it goes into their personal account. They go home, and maybe they say, here, honey, or here, I'm by myself, and I put it in my account. 
But this personal account is not an LLC, an S Corp, a limited life, you know, limited partnership. It's not a corporation, it's a personal thing. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands if that's you, but I am gonna say this to you. I would like to thank you for paying lots in taxes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you overpaying what you should be paying. Keep up the good work. So what's rule number one? Should I have a corporation? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? So check this out, guys. If you answered this, don't feel bad. I, I will teach this stuff at conferences, and I'm blown away by 10 people in the room, 10,000 people in the room, the number of people that go, yeah, I thought about doing that, but like, I don't know, like, which one do I pick? I'm no expert. Here's what you do. You call your accountant and say, I think I need to get incorporated. Which do you recommend based on where I live, what country, what state, etc.? But rule number one is no one leaves this conference. In 30 days, if you are not incorporated and you don't own your business and now your checks come to blankety blank LLC, not you personally, because now you get all the tax advantages. Yes or no, guys? The second category of real estate professionals is the 15% that have business accounts, tax accounts, and personal accounts. When money enters into their business accounts, they immediately send their taxes into their tax accounts. From whatever is left in their business accounts, they take some percentage for their personal needs. This percentage is sent into their personal accounts, percentage for their personal needs. The difference between members of this category and members of the other category is that they take more care of their money. They know they have to pay taxes and leave enough money in their business accounts. Whatever they have in their business accounts will be used to take care of business expenses. The members of this group pay their taxes easily and stay afloat. They make better business decisions and hardly run into debts. Here is Tom's explanation about the members of this group. I want you to imagine a world where, and by the way, did you guys notice the subtle little difference? This one says, check. This one says, checks. Because people that get checks understand the following. I get the check, it goes directly into my business account, right? I get it wired in from escrow. I don't get physical checks anymore. The money just gets transferred over. You with me? Oh, my escrow company, my title company, blah, 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 won't do it. Great, get the physical check. But it goes into a business account, which means now, as you can see, I'm gonna have four different accounts at my bank. Four different accounts at my bank. I'm gonna have my business account, I'm gonna have my tax account, excuse me, three accounts, tax account, business account, and my home account, my personal account. Here's the reality, my friends. If I, if I can encourage and inspire, you know, every single one of you to just do that and then follow the rule. You ready? Write this in your notes. Above the tax account, I want you to write down, let's, let's do an imaginary check and I want you to show you how much money goes where. So at the top, let's say that's a $10,000 check, just for easy numbers. $10,000 check. So all of a sudden, $10,000 hits my business account, and the first thing that happens is instantaneously, 3,300 of the 10,000 goes directly into my tax account. 3,300 automatically into my tax account. Because some of you think when you get a check for 10 grand that you actually have 10 grand. How many of you are in the state of California or New York or in the country of Canada? You get a check for 10 grand and you're lucky if you get 4,500. Members of the 15% group enjoy many benefits. According to Tom, many of his clients that change their mindset from having one account to incorporating their businesses and having multiple accounts find it easy to save more money. He also cites the example of a certain client who was able to save $15,000, pay up all of his taxes and get dividends on his investments just by handling his money differently. Unlike members of the previous group that do not spend all they earn without paying taxes or saving money. Another mistake that poor people make is that they buy nice things without making plans for the future. Tom explains that people who continue with these habits end up with nice things and a lot of debts. Tom differentiates between bad and smart debts. Debts such as mortgages with low interest rates are good debts, while credit card debts with 19% interest rates are bad debts. While the first kind of debt gives you assets, the second group is a big liability. Here is Tom explaining these smart money moves. 
The second group is a big liability. Now you're an entrepreneur, you own your own business, you're gonna start t taking better write-offs, you're gonna pay more attention to your accountant, you're probably gonna have your Uncle Larry, who's done your taxes forever, stop and actually hire a CPA who's gonna pay attention, but 3,300 bucks automatically goes there. Then 3,300 or less goes into your business account. And this is where I run my business. A check comes in, I've got marketing. A check comes in, I've got expenses. A check comes in, I've got my MLS dues. Everything that I need to run my business, every check, 3,300, 3,300, and then what goes over here? 3,400 bucks to my home. Now it sounds like you might need a home budget. What do you guys think? Because many times, what do we do? We get a check and we just start spending the money. By the way, if you look at this, the very first one, this is the, the cardinal sin. This is what poor people do. They get a check and they just start spending. Who knows someone like that, say I. Matter of fact, the bigger the check, the more they start spending. And they never think about debt reduction because they'll do that later. Because I've worked so hard and this was such a challenging transaction and that's why I'm going to overindulge and overspend on myself and we know the financial roller coaster you're actually putting yourself through. This, my friends, is what the people do that take care of their money. They know Uncle Sam or Revenue Canada or Mexico, they're taking their money no matter what. So when I come in, that check comes in, I don't say to myself, I get it all. It automatically goes there. I leave a piece here and the balance goes here. Make sense? So tell your buddy, are you gonna do this, yes or no? Yes or no? Now here's what I know. Look up here, guys. The number of clients that have done this, and then I see them a year later and they go, I have $15,000 in my savings account, I've never had that, but more importantly, I've paid all my taxes. Like I'm on time and I have money inside my business account and it's the end of the year and my accountant said I need to take a dividend so I'm getting a big chunk of change at the end of the year. This is awesome. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like, does anybody like nice things? You know, family trips, vacations, memories, holidays, you know, maybe a new outfit. The challenge is, if you keep that psychology without requiring or putting in the discipline, you know what you end up with? A bunch of nice things and a shit ton of debt. So do me a favor, tell your buddy, do you know someone personally that has too much debt? Anybody, anybody inside this room? Now listen, there's smart debt and there's bad debt, and I'm not gonna go too in depth with you on this, but you know the difference. You know, credit card debt at 19% is dumb debt buying a house and getting a mortgage with three and a half percent is really good debt. So we all know the difference and I just want you to be mindful. I want you to take care of your money. The last categories of people are the wealthy agents. The 5% of real estate agents have multiple accounts. They have even more accounts than the members of the 15% group. Members of this group have business accounts, tax accounts, business expenses accounts, investment accounts, home accounts, cash accounts, 529B, college funds account, market accounts for investments, cash accounts for real estate investments. For members of this group, checks enter into the business accounts. From there, 33% goes into the tax accounts. Another 33% goes into the business expenses accounts. Business expenses accounts will be used to cater to every business expense from advertisement to payments of salaries. Tom cautions that all business owners must keep advertisement expenses below 10% of their expected gross income. The cost of Facebook ads, flyers, billboards, emails, and every other advertisement expense must not exceed 10% of the business's expected gross income for the period. Here is Tom explaining these concepts. Do you want to know what the wealthy agents do? This is what the wealthy agents do. It's a little more complex. It's a little more complex. I would get it up on the big screen over there, guys, and take a photo of it. But more importantly, I want you to draw the whole thing out in your notes. Draw the whole thing out in your notes. This is what the wealthy do. This is the stuff that no one taught me. So I'll until Bill Mitchell pulled me aside and said, what do you do with your money? And I'm like, I don't know. I just get the check and I throw it inside my account and I spend it like crazy and I never have any cash and I'm always in trouble. 
draw this out. So play a game with me. You get a $10,000 check. The $10,000 check goes to what account? To what account? And 33% of it goes automatically where? To my tax account, because I don't really have 10,000. I really have like, you know, 6,000 and change. That's the real deal. So 3,300 automatically here. Then I take another 3,300 over here or less, because I don't know your business expenses. But by the way, guys, your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. Your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. So a percentage of that 3,300 is going to go for your direct mail and your marketing and your email and your Zillow leads and your Facebook ads and the prints and the brochures and everything else. But no more than 10%. No more than 10%. Got it? Because you're incorporated now, your car and a piece of your house and all kinds of other things get written off into or from this account, so we like that. But you might also have inside there, ready guys? A virtual assistant, an assistant. Well, where is that person going to be paid from? You got a check for 10 grand. You didn't actually get 10 grand. You got 6,700. 3,300 goes inside here. Now I can pay my assistant. It starts to work like clockwork. You with me? But you can see this is where it gets interesting. After using roughly 66% of their income for taxes and business expenses, wealthy real estate agents move the rest of their income into their investment accounts. Tom says he prefers to call this account a financial hub because it feeds all other accounts. From whatever is in their investment accounts, they transfer funds into their retirement accounts, save some money for future real estate investments, put some money in 529B accounts for children's college funds, keep personal spending money in their home and cash accounts, and set money aside for other investments. These groups of people have the best attitude towards money. They divide every part of their income into different accounts. With this, there is enough money to build wealth, make purchases, and prepare for emergencies. You can join this elite group too by making better money decisions. You can create as many accounts as you need, even if they are different from Tom's example. You only have to ensure that you are paying your bills and preparing adequately for the future. Listen to Tom's explanation of the behavior of wealthy real estate agents. Do you want to know what the wealthy agents do? This is what the wealthy agents do. It's a little more complex. It's a little more complex. I would get it up on the big screen over there, guys, and take a photo of it. But more importantly, I want you to draw the whole thing out in your notes. Draw the whole thing out in your notes. This is what the wealthy do. This is the stuff that no one taught me. So until Bill Mitchell pulled me aside and said, what do you do with your money? And I'm like, I don't know. I just get the check and I throw it inside my account and I spend it like crazy and I never have any cash and I'm always in trouble. Draw this out. So play a game with me. You get a $10,000 check. The $10,000 check goes to what account? To what account? And 33% of it goes automatically where? To my tax account, because I don't really have 10,000. I really have like, you know, 6,000 and change. That's the real deal. So 3,300 automatically here. Then I take another 3,300 over here or less, because I don't know your business expenses. But by the way, guys, your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. Your marketing cost should be no more than 10% of your expected gross revenue. So a percentage of that 3,300 is going to go for your direct mail and your marketing and your email and your Zillow leads and your Facebook ads and the prints and the brochures and everything else. But no more than 10%. No more than 10%. Got it? Because you're incorporated now, your car and a piece of your house and all kinds of other things get written off into or from this account, so we like that. But you might also have inside there, ready guys? A virtual assistant, an assistant. Well, where is that person going to be paid from? You got a check for 10 grand. You didn't actually get 10 grand. You got 6,700. 3,300 goes inside here. Now I can pay my assistant. It starts to work like clockwork. You with me? But you can see, this is where it gets interesting. 
you have to ask yourself if you want to be a member of the 80% who spend all they make, a member of the 15% who spend some, pay their taxes and save some money to build their business, or a member of the 5% who will pass on their wealth to their children and others after them. If you follow the important tips we share on this channel, it would be very easy to move up the financial ladder. Till our next video, remember to stay street savvy and make better money decisions for financial security. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video.